Hello guys and welcome or welcome back to my channel. In today's video we are going to do a budgeting with me for October. Now if you have or haven't seen these videos before my name is Angie. I am a CRT teacher or a substitute teacher if you are not from Australia which means that I actually don't get paid Actually, I don't, I'm not entitled to any payment pretty much any week um, throughout the year. So my budget and my income does fluctuate quite a fair bit. And my budget is going to be changing this month because we have just recently bought a newer, uh, a new house. It's actually not a newer house. It's from like the 1950s. Um, but our budget and our mortgage and everything is going to be changing, especially in November, because that is when we move out of our current home. So this budget is going to look a little bit different from my previous ones. I have lost a little bit of savings because we've had to pay like, um, like conveyancer fees, all the other sort of fees type of thing that you have to pay when you're selling and buying a home. But without further ado, let's just jump straight into the budget. Okay. So let's start with October. So I don't, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, um, I'm currently on school holidays. So I will most likely not get much work again the first week of October because that's the start of term four. So it will be again, really conservative for the month um, with our earnings. So let's say teaching privately, um, let's go with, $1,500. Again, this is all after tax as well. Um, as a CIT, I do get taxed quite a fair bit because um, some of the schools that I work at are classified as second jobs. So I get taxed like 49.5% or like 38 point something. I don't know, ridiculous. The amount that I do actually get taxed is quite absurd. Um, agency, I do work through an agency sometimes. I tend to not really take a lot of work from them. Um, just because the pay is around $50 less a day and I go to like random schools. So it's not schools that I would re like regularly go to. So the kids can sometimes be a bit more interesting in saying that though, I have actually been to schools where they have been completely beautiful. So just depends. AdSense, I haven't posted for a couple of weeks. So I think I'll be pretty ballsy if I get $200 for the month. Um, so I'm just going to leave it as that. So for the month after tax, we're looking at around $2,900. Again, I don't actually think it'll be that much fingers and toes that it will be. You never know. I might get booked every single day in October. You just don't know. So let's go with that. Okay. So Spotify is not changing. Still $19. Stan again, 14 phone 30. Um, internet's nothing that comes out of a joint account that Lewis and I have together. Mortgage and rent. Now this is where it's going to change. So for the house that we currently have, um, I pay around $800. Oh no, is it around $800 a month? Yeah, it's around eight, eight or $900 a month. With this house that we just currently bought, I'm going to be paying around $1,500 a month. So that is quite a big difference, but it's fine. Um, so what I've actually started to do is with my previous pays, I've started to take, um, cause I get paid fortnightly. I've started to take out $750, um, of that pay to go towards the mortgage and it'll be kind of like a mortgage buffer. So I'm going to put in here 1500. I just want to pretend like I'm paying that mortgage now rather than when we move into the house, it's not such a huge adjustment. I'm adjusting now while I can have a bit of movement rather than when we are already in the house. Bills is going um, to 160, I think it is. Yeah, 160 just because gas is more expensive, electricity, water, you guys know the drill. Everything is just way, way more expensive. So yeah, well, like with the mortgage, so I'll take out $750 with um, like with my pay and then I'll transfer $450 into our current mortgage. And then the 350, I will put aside into another account as again, like a mortgage buffer, just to clarify. I don't know if I explained that properly. Petrol for the month. Yeah, about $180, $90, $90 a fortnight. Again, I think the tax thing in Australia, the like the petrol taxing has just uh, come like it stopped. 
on this current Wednesday. So petrol, I'm assuming, is going to be way more expensive. Before we go any further, let's get into today's video sponsor, which is Cambly. Now, Cambly is an online English learning platform that connects native English speaking tutors with students from over 190 countries. That is absolutely insane. Now, these students are looking to improve their English skills through conversational lessons. So it's not like you're doing grammar or punctuation or any of that sort of English tutoring. It is really through conversing with other people and speaking. Cambly is looking for new tutors who are passionate and looking to connect with other students from all over the world. Now, you do need to be a native English speaker or English as your first language in order to apply. There are so many benefits to tutoring online. First of all, the flexibility. So you can work from wherever you like and whenever you like. With students from over 190 countries, you can work in the morning, the afternoon, the evening, or all three if you wish, because there are always going to be people from different time zones wanting to connect. It's also super easy to get started. So no, you do not have to have any sort of English qualification or teaching qualification in order to apply. All you need is a computer, strong internet, and of course, a passion for speaking and connecting with people from across the globe. Now with teaching, so I'm a teacher, and there is a lot of time taken out of your own personal day where you have to plan lessons, get really pre like prepared for the lessons, and the great thing with Cambly is that you actually don't need to do that at all. They have pre planned lessons for you to just jump on and start conversing and talking with a student. Now you do have the option to follow the pre-prepared plan, or you can also just free verse, as in you can just do whatever you like as long as you are talking with your student. Another great thing is that there is no minimum weekly hours that you need to work in order to be a tutor. So again, it's flexibility and it is completely up to you how much or how little you would like to earn and work. So you might be wondering how often you do get paid. Now this is again quite flexible and your choice. So if you would like to get paid monthly, fortnightly or weekly, you can do that as well. Now, there are only four steps in order for you to apply with Cambly. Step number one is to jump onto the website and click get started. Now, I do have a referral link in the description below. And if you would like to use that link, you will actually get priority consideration upon your application. Step two is just filling out the application. It takes less than 10 minutes, super quick, super simple, super easy. And I'm sure that like those that suffer from anxiety or stress like me, you might be thinking, okay, well, like what's the interview situation like because it's online? Well, there is no interview actually in order to apply. All you need to do is just film a little introductory video about yourself, why you want to be a tutor and maybe what makes you so passionate about tutoring. And of course, lastly, is just to hear back from them, which usually takes only about a couple of days. But again, if you use my referral link, you will get priority over those that just go to the website and apply the standard traditional way. So if you are looking to earn a little bit of extra money on the side, or if you really are just someone who loves to have a chat and wanting to help people to improve their English skills from around the world, then please consider Cambly. Also, don't forget to use my referral link. I'll leave all of the information and everything down in the description below. And thank you kindly so much to Cambly for sponsoring today's video. All right, let's get back into the budget. Um, groceries. Okay, so groceries is again staying at $400 not really spending um like anything really above that that's again just my 400 dollars. that's for cat food and like litter and all that sort of stuff um, lewis also puts 400 dollars into the same account and we have 800 dollars for the groceries for that month splurge money oh okay so this is interesting so for october i am doing a no spend apart from Here's the catch. So I'm going to have like $50 for coffees and hot chocolates. you got to have like treat yourself like just a little bit. And then I'm going to have another $50 for any family dinners that we go to. So sometimes we go out for Vietnamese or we go out for Thai on a Wednesday night just to catch up. Or we have takeaway at somebody's house. I don't want to not go just because I'm doing a no spend. So I have to have some sort of leniency. So let's say like splurge account is going to be $100 and that's it. Absolutely no more than that. I want to stop spending money for the month because November is going to be a very, very expensive 
month. So we have to save as much as we possibly can. I'm not going to lie, it is going to be a challenge, but um, yeah, we'll see how we go. Health insurance is going to be, again, $100 for the month. And I've also changed some of my sinking fund amounts, which I'll just show you here. I'll have to get up the new ones because, again, the house insurance for the new house is more expensive. Council rates is more expensive. Everything, obviously, is just more expensive. So here are the new ones over here. I might put it over here for you so that you can see. So car service is still... $20, which is good. I'm just going to center this and I'm going to just go back and forth. Registration and insurance is going to be 84. So auto insurance is going to be 42. And then car rego is going to be 42 as well. House insurance is going to change to 35. I've got enough of a buffer in my house insurance that it should cover more than this new house's house, house insurance. So I think throughout the year, I did a really good job of over budgeting in some of my sinking funds. So then I've got a little bit of extra money. So house insurance is 35. Car service is staying at $20. I think I've got about still $1,000 in my car service account, which is heaps. That does like mean that I can buy new tires or if anything major comes up, I can take money out of that account, which is awesome. Christmas, I have completely funded my Christmas fund, so I can cut back a little bit there. So that's getting $25. Birthdays, again, um, there's no birthdays up until, I think Lewis's is the next one. Lewis's birthday, apart from my own, um, that'll be 25. So I should be able to save up quite a nest egg from now until May. Clothes, it's still getting its usual 50. I try not to change that too much just because, I don't know, I don't want to not have the option to buy something if I want or need it. Like my Converse at the moment are uh, disgusting. They are, they were white. Let's just say that. They were white and now they are an amazing muddy brown color because they're comfortable and I wear them everywhere. Council rates, let's have a look at that. Oh, sorry, that's actually, what have I done? I'm so silly. I did this for... <laughs> A fortnight, not a month, sorry. That's 84. Let's go back and change. Oh my God, I'm so silly. 84, 70. I wonder why it looked different. <laughs> 40, 84, 50, birthdays, 50. Clothes is going to be 100. I'm so silly. Council rates. Let's have a look at council rates. So they are much higher in the new area where we're living or where we are going to live. Um, because it is in a bushier, like we live in a bushy-ish sort of area at the moment, but where we move to is a lot more bushier. So council rates is about 42 a fortnight. So that'll be 84 a month going into a sinking fund. And then house decor, I'm actually going to stop just for the time being. Like I can keep adding to it if I would like to, but I think I might put that extra hundred dollars in towards savings. Well, I mean, in October, if things keep going the way that they are, I'm going to have like no money left investment. I'm taking it. So if I earn um, a good amount from YouTube um, AdSense, so like the $200, I'm going to have to put that into my savings. I'm not going to be able to invest it just because you can see I'm already $165 over budget and I'm not sure what would give. It would most likely have to be the overpayment in mortgage that like we might have to take a little bit of that out, which is okay for the time being because we don't have to start paying that like mortgage until December. So you still get an extra month of like planning, which is good. Or groceries, I might have to cut a little bit of that out. We'll see how we go. You never know, we might absolutely smash the income in October and go way over what I have planned, which fingers and toes crossed. Okay, let's look at my savings accounts. So emergency fund, I still haven't cut or like touched it. It's um, increased by $10 with the interest. Yay, we got $10 extra. Um, mortgage buffer currently has 350. Uh, like I said, the 700, and actually I think I've done that wrong. It doesn't matter. 350, I've already put it in there, um, is going to be the 
is going to be the amount that I'll be putting in every single fortnight to pretend like I'm already paying that amount in mortgage. General savings, I think I changed that. Uh, I did lose a bit of that money because of a couple of fees that we had to pay uh, for the houses, like to sell our house and to buy the house. So it's actually gone down to 3287 So $3,287. So it is minus around 300 which is okay. It's fine. It's not too much. Cash though... Um, I added up all of my tutoring money from the last couple of terms and I have about $3,000 in tutoring money. But as you guys know, if you've watched previous videos, that money is going straight towards housing decor. So any sort of anything that we need, like a couch, dining table, chairs, cutlery, anything that we need. That's what that money is for. It's not for my own personal spending. It's for the house. And school holidays, let's contribute 200. So the school holidays account is from the end of December through to about mid-February. I am not entitled to any sort of pay, which means that I have to pre-prepare to have no money for around two months. Because at the start of the year, like the term start of the year, I most likely won't get as much work again. So that's really good because it'll help me pay for my mortgage. It'll be my splurge. It probably won't be any savings or sinking funds or anything like that. That's why I kind of have to over budget in these sections here just to make sure that I have enough to cover all of my bills throughout the year. So that means that in total, I have about uh, 15. Oh, wait, oh wait, let's do the let's do the calculation. So that means I should have about $15,992 in savings, which is really good. Like when you actually look at the negative over here, it's not too bad because I can always take it out of my emergency fund. I just try and find ways to earn a bit of extra money so then I don't have to do that. But yeah, so that's my budget for October. Please let me know what you think about the October no spend idea. Do you think I'll be successful? <laughs> um, look, I have faith in myself, but I'm also doing Oxoba as well, which means that I'm not drinking any alcohol for the month of October, which is fine because when we were in Tasmania, like last week, um, Lewis and I drank our weight in alcohol for a whole month. So we had a really good time, it was so fun. Just trying to do something different to save a bit of money and yeah, just challenge ourselves in something different. But yeah, make sure that you leave me a comment down below. How's your budgeting going, especially with Christmas coming up? Are you prepared? Are you not prepared? Uh, if you need any help, make sure that you leave any questions so then our little community can help each other out. And I will see you in a video sometime in the very near future. I would also like to say a really quick and big thank you to Cambly as well for sponsoring today's video. Much appreciated. Don't forget to see all the information and links and everything in the description below. And I'll see you soon, guys. Bye.